dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, it might get loud. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to Wednesday the 8th of May. We are doing the documentary, It Might Get Loud. That's right. I love this documentary. I really do. Uh, it Might Get Loud, 2009, Davis, uh, Guggenheim. It is uh, kind of a this fun little cross-section of musicians. Uh, we have uh, Jack White from White Stripes and Dead Weather and Raconteurs and so on and so forth. Uh, we have Edge from U2 and we have uh, Jimmy Page from uh, Yardbirds and Led Zeppelin, of course. And it's really fun to see where their styles overlap. And right. in fact, like Jack White is very adamant about he does not like to produce his music. You know, he does not like effects. He thinks that that takes the artistry out of it. And he likes to fight, you know, battle his guitars. Right. It opens up with this cool scene where he's like building his own kind of yeah, I like guitar. That. Yeah. Good, I love that. He's like, That's see, why awesome. do you have to buy a guitar? Yeah, he's like, who says you have to buy a guitar? Um, it, that's a really cool, you know, I, I don't agree with him necessarily, but I totally understand where that's coming from, and I admire that. And then Edge is on the opposite side. He's very, you know, he's very... Uh, to me, sometimes I would say he's an artist, and Jack White is a musician. Now, they're both artists, they're both fabulous at what they do, but uh, Jack White is, is manipulating what he has. Uh, Edge is really thinking about, you know, how the, you know, how he produces the sound, what effect he wants for this, what it reminds him of, tweaking it, making it very precise. Hmm. So I'm, I'm probably a little more in the Edge camp, but I, I love Jack White. I love me some Jack White. Uh, and then we get Jimmy Page, who's almost in between because he's a classically, you know, he, he's well trained. He's been through it all. He's done so many different types of music. Right. But he pushes himself, and he wants to do like. One thing that I learned when I was in, in a band is nobody wants to do that tempo change in the middle of the song. Nobody wants to go from slow to fast. He wanted to do that, he said, from the get-go. He wanted to do stuff like that, just you know, things that he was told not to do. He wanted to do them and you know, make them work. So it's really an interesting thing. And they get together. They're, they're, supposedly, they're just getting together to talk about the electric guitar. And then, you know, of course, there's guitars there, so maybe we'll play, maybe we won't, or whatever. And it's just this fun ride. Um, one thing I will say is that it's intercut between the three stories so frequently that every once in a while you might lose track of, you know, who's saying what. Yeah. Um, but it gives such a, a fair-handed account of all three, you know, all their history and their intention with the music, what they, you know, what they've learned from it. Jimmy Page has a lot more history and story about about you know Led Zeppelin and, and growing up and he was doing all this this crazy music. He he would basically work for a studio and jump in anytime they needed some music. And uh, he was really adept at that, but he started getting really tired of it because it was somebody else's music. It was always somebody else's. So he wanted to write his own and do his own thing and break the rules. And so they did Yardbirds, which Yardbirds uh, is um, a little more experimental for the for its time. And then Led Zeppelin is kind of like he grew up and took his place. And I love Led Zeppelin to this day. They're wonderful. Yeah. Um, and Jack White, it's really interesting because he has such an old soul. Yeah. Uh, about him he talks about really old jazz and blues and he's very correct in saying that the farther you go into rock and roll the more you get to blues and jazz because it really is it, it's just the, kind of this purity of expression and uh uh you know even just minor chords and stuff now that's the i think that's the problem i have with a lot of modern music is that it's major chords and it, it, to me, it just doesn't work. It's too happy. I don't know. So I, I definitely appeal, you know, his soul appeals to me. Yes. Um, because there's just more weight to the music, and it's just about expressing that. In fact, I guess one of his favorite songs uh, is not even, it's just a guy singing, tapping the table or Off whatever. Beat. And it's it's very, yeah, it's very interesting. But just the, the yeah, the, the approaches and how different they are, it's just amazing to watch. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah, you definitely learn a thing or two about how these great artists, musicians, um, create the music that they do. You know, how, how do they, how do they go from one simple note that they have in their head to an entire music, you know, entire album? It's well, just, yeah. it's well, it's great. very different on personalities too. Yes. I mean, you get a very distinct taste for each one of these guys. Yeah. Whoever uh, you know picked these three was brilliant. 
I definitely think that you know Jack White is is the young upstart of the three. I mean, the well, other think, two are so accomplished. Well, but, I think they were doing generations. So you had Jimmy Page, then you had uh, the Edge, and then you had uh, right, Jack right, right, right. And Jack White was still doing the rack and rack and tour. So Dead Weather hadn't come out. You know, a lot of his other stuff hadn't come out. So he was still growing, and he was definitely you know had you know made his mark on White Stripes. But it's interesting to hear him talk. He gives a little bit of dismissal to the White Stripes and why it was so popular because he's like, you know, we were trying to do this jazz, you know, blues thing, uh, but we disguised it as like a kitty thing because so people would would like it, they, right? You know, think it was cute and whatever. So he almost dismisses that, yeah, which is he, interesting. He but, called it a, a cartoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was really interesting to see how he loves to fight the instrument. He definitely does. And I kind of have a problem with that because I have a really good ear. Uh, it would be perfect to have, if I had the right training. Uh, but yeah, he's he's way off. His guitar's out of tune and whatever. But all together it works. Yes. Now the thing is, when they all play, um, take a load off, Fanny. I think it's interesting because I don't like Jack's white like singing with technically good music. It does not work for me. Huh. It only works if it is off key and kind of like just this pu- purity of expression. It doesn't work to mix the two for me. I I, I enjoyed his parts of the song. Musically, but his lyrics did not fit like Edge's music. Yeah, it, it yeah. just that that was really interesting to me to to find out. But again, I'm more picky than most. But um, yeah, the whole thing is very pleasant to watch. It's not very long, but it feels really in depth. Like you just got a lot of information, and it's so fun to see like Jimmy Page and like where they recorded uh, you know songs and like the drums and all that stuff. Yeah, they, they went to this awesome you know place in England, just this estate that they were able to use, and so we get a little taste of that. Yeah, talk about how they had like. Uh, on the on the second floor of the, of the banister that led you know downward, they had the microphones and yeah, it was just it was it was an awesome yeah, it was all about the yeah. acoustics and reverb and all that stuff, yeah. echo and uh, and then Edge, we see you know a little bit of, of the turmoil in Ireland when they were starting. You know, it was, it was very it was it was a depression uh, when they started, and so we get a little bit of that. And then Jack, you know, we get him living in Detroit and really you know not fitting in with with the Mexico. It was like Mexico City is yeah, where he yeah. lived, you know, kind of thing. And yeah, so it just sure. goes on and on. It's just this really interesting fun ride. Yeah. So I can't recommend it highly enough. I wish it was on Netflix. I don't believe it is. But if you're interested in in any of these three artists and you like documentaries, I say go buy it. Absolutely. I, I wouldn't hesitate at all. It was, I think it was you'll great. love it. Um. Yeah. I think it's funny that between Jack White and Edge, I can see a little bit of tension with Jack White because I I think that Jack White, he, you know, he definitely gives him his due. Yeah. But I just feel this kind of condescension coming from him just a little bit, like from Jack White. Yeah, or... because I mean, every statement he makes is like, when you produce it, you lose your soul, you lose the art. It's not about that, you know, kind of thing. And and I just kind of feel bad, you know, like at the very end, I don't. We didn't see all of it. It's edited, but like they all give each other hugs except for Jack White and Edge. They just like stay on the opposite ends of the stage, and I don't think there's any you know like ill will or anything there. But, right, right. But right. I think that there's but, an interest. It would be interesting to have them have that conversation. Right. Yeah. Uh, one of the, one of the things that that um, the Edge brought up, and I thought that this was kind of a cop out too, was he said I came up with this great new riff, and it's just dun 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 dun. It's just the two two notes. But then he does the distortion, and he changes the distortion. Yeah, but and... you got to understand, he created that yeah. distortion. I, I got that. I, so I it has nothing understand. to do. And what you know, what does Jack White do? He goes rear and rear and rear and rear. It's the same. I mean, you know, it's very simple gestures. It doesn't it doesn't matter. I mean, art can be simple. Right, right. Uh, it's it's really about the time and effort into creating an emotion or making a statement, which right. both of them do. What I was trying well. to say was that's probably where the friction came in, and you know, one 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 personality is. Is I created this using this technique, and this person said, "I don't That's think so. Not I think right it's way. looking at it too simplistically." Jack Jack White knows how to do that. He just chooses. You know, he wants to fight. It's it's more about his personal expression. He's definitely more about live music. You know, yes. kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, I, I just think that it's a, a different vibe. But he he understands it. Yeah, yeah. Anybody who plays guitar with effects understands that. So there you go. Hearty recommend from both of us. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, tell us what you think. Uh, watch a great playlist. Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. Yes, please. T-shirts, a card game, art print, short stories, more. And please check out my new blog, fist37.tumblr.com. I'm going to be blogging as characters from my game. It's all in preparation for the Kickstarter. I'll be doing releases and news stories and art and all sorts of stuff. So you can get a flavor of my writing and my universe that I've created and the game. Uh, all leading up to that Kickstarter. So please support us and uh, tell your friends. Like us if you like it. 
Uh, leave comments. Uh, it's all good. Thanks for your support, guys. See you later. Oh, I hit it. Next time, it's Justice League Unlimited. On today's dual review, it might get loud. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. I was trying to think of something to say, but I couldn't think of it. Let's get to it. Because that's what you usually say. Except for last time, you did rawr, or whatever you did. Dragon. Loud. I'm going to be honest. It might get loud. Sounds like one of those, uh, like, stomp the yard type mm, movies. It might get loud. I think that's more what it's like. It's warning people. It might get loud. Because it doesn't have like a preface, you know, like... It might warning! Get loud. It might get loud. Might. We apologize. We don't really know. The entire movie is... Uh, and it just gets louder and louder and louder. And so you're like, I can't take it anymore! That would be it. might get louder. Apparently I wear headphones all the time when I'm watching anything. <laughs> I have headphones on. Take them off and drop down. I just figured you were covering your ears. I don't think you really thought about that statement. Oh, well, in my mind, when I'm when I'm doing this... I'm, I can't take I'm, it anymore and then put your hands over your ears? Well, it's because my headphones are, like, glaring. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's it's not clear. You remember you remember in Fifth Element when uh, the, the, the Zorg had... Uh, the Zorg. When Zorg had that little cockroach thing with the little antenna, and he's climbing up there, and the president sees it, and he slaps it, and the, the guy that was working for him had the headphones on. Yay! And the headphones were flying, and I love that scene. It was just so funny, but that's what I think of every time I do that. Okay. That was long-winded and had no real point. So we're on par. <laughs>